will shout your praise. Our hearts, Our hearts will, will cry. Yeah. These bones will sing. We sing great. Praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is a good day. This is a good hour. This is a good minute. This is a good second to give glory to God for all he's done, for all he's doing, for all he's getting ready to do. The doors that God has opened up in our lives. We come this morning to tell him thank you. Tell God thank you. Thank you, Lord, for making a way out of nowhere. Thank you, Lord, for moving the obstacles out of my way. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me for the sins I've committed. Thank you, Lord, for throwing them in the sea of forgetfulness. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a made-up mind. Thank you, Lord, for come picking me up, Lord, one day off of my trash pile and turning my life around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Aren't you glad this morning? Ain't God a good God? Tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Woo! I feel good up here. I'm sitting here waiting. Waiting on the services to start. I was like a horse in a glass stable. I was just kicking and bucking, waiting, waiting, and ready to celebrate God, to worship Him, to tell Him thank you. I've been up since three o'clock this morning telling God thank you. Yes, Lord, we're gonna get this services started. Good God Almighty, He's good to us, Lord. He's good to us. Woo! I do want to ask our community choirs to gather to come up on the uh, pulpit, please, on the stage. Amen. If you, if you want to sing, come on. Oh, hallelujah. Let's give God some praise this morning. I thank him. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
Glory to God. Everyone from the community is willing to come out and let's worship and praise the Lord. I'm going to commence. I'm going to start off with our scripture reading. And I'm going to do something a little different this morning. We're going to go to uh, the book of Psalms. Amen. And I want to look this morning for our worship service. I want us to look at Psalms 100 because it is exciting scripture. This scripture lets us know that God can make a way out of no way when we walk right, when we live right, when we do right. God is an awesome God. The word of God for the people of God. It says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All he lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful, be thankful unto him and pray and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. We will now have our prayer by Reverend Judd. Our God and our Father, the maker, creator of all things. It is again, Father, we come into your presence. We come masked in truth and in spirit, realizing and thanking you, for you are truth within yourselves. We come, Heavenly Father, thanking you for another day's journey. Thanking you for bringing us into another day of celebration of the resurrection of our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. We just want to say thank you. We just want to lift you up and give you the praises for the great things that you have done. Lord, you've been good to us. You laid us down on last evening. And as early this morning, you touched us. We arose with the reasonable health and strength. And Lord, we just want to thank you for still obtaining a signed mind. Yes, Lord, you've been good to us. And we want to give you the praises, the honor, and the glory within this hour. You know our needs, Father. You know our intents. But yet at all, Father, it is all up to you. So now, Lord, as we acknowledge, humble ourselves before thee, expecting to be a blessing, Father, to you. For it is by faith we are right now receiving a blessing from you. So, Father God, as we continue into this morning worship service, resurrection morning, <laughs> Ooh, glory. Yes. Just do it again. And amen. I just want to thank you, Lord, I just want to thank you, oh, Lord, I just
just want to thank you, oh Lord. I want to thank you for being so good to me, so good to me. Oh Lord, I just want to thank you, 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 I want to thank you for being so good to me. Wanna thank you. Oh, oh Lord, I oh Lord, I just wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for being so good to me. So to me oh well you heal my body and I thank you oh you oh well you heal my oh you heal my body and I thank you I want to thank to me, so good to me, oh, Lord, I just want to thank you, oh, oh, Lord, I, oh, Lord, Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for so good. Oh, well, you died for me, and I thank you. Oh, you died for me. Oh, yes, you died.
somebody. Mm. Oh, I gotta get out of the way. We'll have a plural. I'm not sure who's doing it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Him. What a mighty God we serve. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father. Certainly we greet you in that name, that miraculous, but that's a magnificent name that at that name every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank God on this Sunday morning. I'm standing to give the purpose and I believe that my purpose is easy. And the reason I say it's easy because everyone in it, if you are a believer, then you know why you are here. Now, now if you're not a believer, you might be in the wrong place. Amen. Amen. And our purpose is here to celebrate. Amen. Uh, the birth not the birth, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And you got to know him for yourself. Praise his holy name. Amen. And then as I hear it through this purpose, somebody said it was a good morning. Not only was it a good morning, but it was early in the morning. And you need to look around and just throw your hands up and tell the Lord, thank you for a good morning. Yeah, you might not have what you want, but you ought to tell the Lord, thank you for a good morning. Yeah, yeah, this is this, this, this here. So not only was it early morning, but it was a good morning. And then, then watch this, and I don't want to tell it, but Bishop going to tell it. But, but even if it was early, it was good, but it's one of those good telling story mornings. And because when you leave here, you ought to tell somebody, he's not dead. Yeah, yeah. He, come on, you need to tell somebody. It was an early morning. It was a good morning. And it was one of them good run and telling mornings. Run and tell somebody that he's alive and he's well. Anybody know he's alive? Come on, no fool. Me. If you know he's alive, if you know he's alive, wave your hand and say, because he lives. I can face tomorrow. And that is our purpose. We're here to celebrate this resurrection, a early morning, a good morning, and one of those run and tell the story mornings. He's alive and he's a well in my soul. Give the Lord another hand of praise. God bless you. We're going to ask that our worship will come as you prepare to give. Trust me, you do. Amen. My trustees here to help us. Come on, ushers. Uh, I, I tell you what, come and sit our tray up, our table. Come on, hug y'all get our table set up. Some brothers, come on and help me. Amen. We want everyone to stand and prepare to give. For certainly you cannot beat the Lord giving no matter how you try. Come on, Deacon Jeffrey, y'all help him set this table up. And the ushers going to ask you to march around. Only what we do for Christ will last. And the mama let us know God blesses a cheery forgiver. Amen. We're going to start. Our wishes will come and lead and guide you to come. Let everyone stand, those able to stand. To come and give. The Lord bless you. Please, ma'am, please, sir.
everyone that's giving it out to give them the show we're going to ask that. Dickie, you'll do it. Okay. I can pay. Father God, it's once again we come, Lord, to tell you thank you. Thank you for your healing, your deliverance. Thank you for your resurrection. Thank you, Father God, for giving us an opportunity to give unto you, Lord. We ask you to take this offering now and use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom down here on earth. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. Oh. Amen. Well, it's preaching time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I say it's preaching time. Yeah. It's time for the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You ought to get excited over the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Everything is going down except the word of God. We are grateful once again to see as many of you here with us on this sunrise service. And we thank God for all of you, our visitors from various churches. I see St. John, Hemingway, Cambridge, Cherry Hill, amen. Bethlehem, amen. Anyone else, call it out, amen. All right, Mason Temple, all right. We're so happy to have all of you all here with us, amen. And we thank God, amen. Amen. Pray that you let go and let God have his way. Amen. We have a preacher who can preach and will preach. Amen. Now, he, he, now, he already got one witness, but I know he got two witnesses. She just hasn't said nothing yet. <laughs> First Lady Spain, to all the preachers, let me do this to all the preachers, but all the preachers stand, all the ministers. Let's get on my hand. Amen. All these preachers. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Now, I want Bishop to know he got some help in here. Amen. He got some help. And we thank God as I introduce my friend, my brother. Bishop is, uh, he's a smooth preacher. He's a cool preacher. Yeah, he, he takes his time and he, yeah, he's smooth with it. Amen. He know when to come in and he know where to get off at. Amen. And I, I praise God for his spirit, one who loves the Lord and loves what he's doing. And Bishop is no stranger here. Amen. And this is his home. Amen. And uh, we thank God. First Lady of Spain, let's give her a hand. His beautiful wife is here. God bless you all and the church family. And I'm not going to prolong the time with preliminaries, but I do know that he can preach. He will preach. Amen. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready for a word. Amen. And that's that you pray for Bishop Melvin. I thought I remember that Miller. What's that Miller name? Okay, he told me to keep going. I wait for the that Miller name. Slip my mind. Amen. What is this here? Randolph. That's right, Bishop Melman Randolph, Spain. Amen. Amen. Look, raise your right hand toward the Bishop of Spain. Say, Bishop of Spain, preach the word. Bishop of Spain, preach the word. Bishop of Spain, help yourself and preach the word. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Community choir going to sing. Next one is here, then, other than Bishop Melvin Spain. Amen. How many people know living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, glorious day. Everybody say. Everybody say, living, he loved me, dying, he said. 
Amen. Why don't you just give God a hand clap of praise? Come on, I need you to give God a hand clap of praise. Now, could you just look at somebody and say, I'm glad to be here today. I'm glad to be here. You may be seated. We thank God today for the blessings of the Lord. We do honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do honor Dr. Bridges, Pastor Judge, the Conway Circuit, to Reverend Huggins, and to all the other preachers and everyone that is here. It's good for us to be here. Now, Dr. Bridges said that he asked the preachers to stand, and he said, I got some help. Now, I don't need y'all to turn your license in on me today. I need y'all to use them. I always tell people whenever they give you a license, they mean for you to drive. So, so if, if I'm saying something, I need your preachers to help me drive. Is that all right? Just in case I get tired, I, I was in Daytona Beach years ago. I was a young man preaching in and didn't quite understand it, but oh man, he was getting up to preach, and he said, just in case, I can't finish this. Yeah, yeah. And if I have to pass it back to one of you, I expect for y'all to run with it. Yeah. Well, just in case I can't finish today, <laughs> if I pass it back, I believe I got somebody to <laughs> run with it. All right, right. Is that all right? Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. That's what happened on this day that we celebrate. Somebody ran with it. Yeah. Amen, amen. We do thank God. Thank God for Sister Spain. And uh, I'm going to have a talk with her giving out that name. <laughs> Sit up here and listen to Dr. Bridges. <laughs> amen. But we thank God. We thank God. I, I got one preacher. I think every time he called my name, he had to say the whole name. <laughs> amen, amen. But we're grateful. God is good to us. It's a good day for us to be here. Yeah, yeah. I will tell you, the only problem I have today is that I think that it should be more saved people in the house today. Uh, we, 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 we run all week to the stores buying things and different changing of clothes and, and getting all the eggs and getting all the baskets and getting all these things. But uh, those of us that are saved ought to realize that the greatest thing to us is resurrection morning. And if I'm going to get up for anything, I ought to get up for the resurrection morning. If I can't put on my new outfit, I can get up for resurrection morning. Because he got up, I can get up. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm here. Oh, God is good today. God is good today. Amen, 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 amen. If you will, from the 28th chapter of St. Matthew, we're going to, and thank God for First Lady Bridges over here. I, God is, God is good. He's good, he's good, good. To all the preacher's wives, all the, all the wives, husbands, please stand. To all the preacher wives and to all the wives that got a husband, please stand. Amen, amen. That way we'll get everybody. Amen, amen, amen. All right, St. Matthew, the 28th chapter, and the first verse said, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, mm -hmm. came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary All right, sir. to see the sceptical. Yes, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Mm. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone yeah. from the door and sit upon it. Mm. Father, we thank you today yes, for you being a mighty, mighty God. Yes, 
we give you praise today. God, we know, God, that you are great. Yes, sir. You blessed us in the past. Thank you, Lord. And I just believe you're going to bless us again today. So, God, as I stand as your servant, God, as I stand as your friend, as I stand as an instrument to be used by you, God, I pray that the anointing fall fresh in this place. Fall on me, not just on me, but God, fall on those that are here, that hear your word. For the words that he that have a ear, let him hear what the Spirit have to say to the church. And God, I pray even now, God, as they hear your word, God, and they know it is your word. Let them respond, God, with a praise on their lips. And at the end of this service, we can say, God, you've been with us all morning long. And we just want to tell you, thank you. Bless us now, God. Keep our minds and our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Before I give you a subject, I just... I, I, I like God because the word said the Holy Ghost bring all things to your members. All right. Well, I recognize Pastor Judge. So I asked, I know I asked the preacher's wife to stand, but First Lady Judge sitting over there. Amen. We thank God for her. Yeah. All right. So I won't be here for two hours. The grits might get cold. So I got about 15 good minutes. Now somebody telling me 20. You know, I add to a preacher, he already add himself. But I can tell you what I tell him at St. John. If you if you want the preacher to preach and sit down, talk to him. Talk to him so he know he's saying something. Because if you don't talk to him, he think he maybe you missing it, and he need to repeat it again. But if you talk to him, he he'll, he'll get through with everything he got, and he'll sit down. I got anybody here want to talk to me today? Well, if you if you just talk to me a little while, I want to tell you the subject is God did it. God did it. We live in a world where a lot of things are happening, a lot of things are changing, a lot of things are moving in different directions, and, and there are some things we know how it's going to turn out. There are some things we don't quite understand how it's going to work out. Some things we can put our hands on and, and we know how to make it function, but then there are some things we just don't understand. And we keep looking for answers and we keep searching. And there are some things I will tell you that I've been trying to figure out since I was a little boy. And some of them I still haven't figured out yet. But you keep trying to find the answer because I've learned over the years and, and as you get older, you start understanding that I, I, I don't know, young people are different now. They are crossing you over and over. But when I came up, uh, if the old people told you something and you asked them, they say, because I told you. That was the end of the story. No more questioning, no more. So there were some times I asked a whole lot of things and I didn't get some answers, but I, I thank God that over the years that the word of God has opened up some things to me. I said to somebody one day, I understand all of the times that I got beaten. But I ain't gonna never tell you I fell in love with them. I'm not gonna tell you I appreciate them today. I understand why I got them, but at the same time, I'm not going to tell you I enjoyed them either. And I appreciate it. No, I ain't going to tell you that because it hurt. It hurt. But I understand why I got them. I heard, 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 heard Reverend Huggins say that it's good that God take the trash and do something with it. All we were were just people traveling and tied up on this world and with no sense of direction. Don't let nobody fool you. You don't know where you're going until you get to know Jesus. 
Until you get to know him, you're just fumbling around on this earth. You, you don't even understand your purpose. But every one of us that are living today, there is a purpose to our life. If there was no purpose to your life, God would have never allowed you to be born. But if you're born, he, there is a purpose to your life. Now, the thing I like about God is, is that God is, is our, our, our only way out of this stuff that we're in. Yeah. He's our only way out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me let me just just kind of catch us up here. Catch us up here on, on, on Friday night. Uh, Doctor Bridges talked about the last seven things that Jesus said yeah. while he was on the cross. Yes, well, I'm not going to go back over the last seven things, but what I am going to do is tell you that Jesus' purpose of coming was so that we could be saved. Now, now I don't know about you, but that's a good thing to me because uh, uh, if, if he hadn't died for us, if he hadn't died, he hadn't died for us, can you imagine what would be going on now? While you are sitting somewhere, somebody is digging in your pocketbook. While you are trying to move up, somebody's trying to cut you down. But the love of God, the love of God calls us to be able to sit among each other and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Jesus came to save us. He died for us. He went through a whole lot for us. More than what we would ever go through. Can you imagine being born and being born and at the time of your birth, somebody is seeking to kill you? Your parents got to flee from one place to another place just so that they can keep you. Can, can, can you just imagine being born and being different from everybody else? In other words, you have so much in you so you don't know how to get all of it out of you. People don't understand you. People don't, they, they, they just can't figure it out. I, I, I told you there's some things I couldn't figure it out. I, and there are some things in my life I couldn't figure out why I went through those things. Why I had to go that way. But now as I get older, I understand that God had a plan. And the only thing I could do was follow the plan of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. But let me just try to hurry up and get through here. But Jesus came and he, 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 he lived and he yeah. did things and he was rejected by people. And, yeah. and, and, and here it is. How is it that you doing good, but you got to get mixed up in the crowd and remove yourself uh -huh. from where you at from yeah. just healing somebody? Uh -huh. How is it that you are doing good and people are always working to shut you down? Right. Yeah. My, my. Think yeah. about it. Yeah. Mm. You come to church. My, my. You come to Bible study. You come to prayer meeting. Oh, and all people got to do is talk about you. Every time I turn around, they at that church. Every time I turn around, talking about they praying. But when they get in trouble, who do they call? Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine? What it must have been like for him mm. to reach out to people yeah. 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 that was rejecting them. All right, sir. I asked them last Sunday at St. John, I said, uh, 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 will your praise change? Yeah. Mm. Because when he came into the city, it tells us that they laid down their garments and yeah. they, laid down prom they laid down branches before him yeah. and they were shouting, Hosanna! But but later on, his, the praise had changed from Hosanna to crucify him. Can you imagine what it must have felt like to, to, be, to be journeying and on a journey that you're going through. And then you go and you pray. And as you pray, you see what's ahead of you. And you said, Father, oh God, if it will, let this cup pass from me. But then he said, nevertheless... Yes, sir. At thy will. Yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless. Yes, sir. God, I'm doing it. Yes, I'm going through. I'm going through. 
That's me sounding off back there. Yeah. Just slide it over, slide it over. I thought I had it turned off. That's all right, that's all right. But we're going to get through this today. That's why I should have left it in the car. Y'all got your phone? Check your phone, check your phone, check your phone. Don't be like the preacher. Check your phone. Amen, amen. But, but, but what, what, what I want you to understand is, is that here it is now Jesus. He's in the garden and he, he know he's at the very end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could have, he could have, he could have stopped right there. Uh-huh. But, but, but he was willing to go through for us. Yeah. Now, don't, don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get you to the text I read, but I just need to get you there first. See, you can't jump here and jump there, but you got to get to that place. But when he, when he said that he was willing to do what the, let the Father will be done, in other words, what happened is they took him and they tried him, and, and the Bible said they could not find anything wrong. Mama. Nothing wrong, Mm -hmm. full of lies, full of just things they wanted to mess with him about. But but, but I I just want to let you know our Savior loved us enough that they said while they beat him, he said not a mumbling word. I, 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 I want you to picture that in your mind. That, and that's why I say this church should be full. Churches all over Conway should be full. Because you ought to be willing to give God some praise. Because let me tell you, I don't know too many people that's going to take a beating for me. I don't know many people going to take lashes on their back for me. I don't know too many people going to let people lie on them for me. When they really know it is me that is wrong. Yeah, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. But he yeah. went through. My Lord. Went through all of that. Come on, they took him. Uh-huh. They took him out. Yes, sir. Yeah. Brought him before them praising people. All right, sir. <laughs> and they say crucify. Yeah. Out of all he done. Nah. They say crucify. Yes, so mm. now they take him. Yeah. They take him to the cross. Mama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They hang him on the cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know about you, uh-huh. but I, 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 I'm glad it was Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Because I. I just don't think I could say it. I told y'all some of them things I'm still trying to figure out. I'm still trying to figure out that they nail him to the cross. For him to say, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And I've said many times, they had to know. You know you're hurting him. You know you're doing him wrong. You know that lies made up. You know he healed the sick. You know he opened the blinded eye. You know he made the lame walk. You know he raised the dead. How is it that you won't get rid of the one individual uh-huh. Uh-huh. that went through all that for you? But let me help you out. They just didn't know. They just didn't know. They just didn't know. They just didn't know. But you know what I'm glad of today? I'm glad they didn't know. I don't know what y'all ever thought about it, but I'm glad. I'm glad they didn't know. Because he had to die for our sins. Woo, my goodness, my goodness. Because they didn't know, they nailed him to the cross. Because they didn't know, they marked him. Because they didn't know, they pierced him in his side. Because they didn't know. They thought giving him. My Lord. Some vinegar would ease yeah. his pain. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing mm. was going to ease the pain no, mm-hmm. because he came to die yeah. Yeah. for our sins. And as he came to die, he, he hung there well. on that cross. Yes, sir. He hung on that cross so that you can have a praise. 
Think about it. He think, just, just, just really think about it. He hung on the cross so you can have a praise. He hung on the cross so you can have something to shout about. He hung on the cross so you can have something to praise God for. Because if he had not died, if he had not died, oh, we wouldn't be here. But I thank God he died. I thank God he died. But, but now I'm, I'm going to have to try to finish here. Yeah. I think I done used my 15. Right. I'll take your five you gave me. <laughs> but, 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 but so he died on the cross. Wow. And they took him down. They took him down. And they, they put him in a borrowed tomb. Right. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just help you out with something. When they put him in the tomb, they put him in the tomb. And they was in a rush. And they were doing it. And they didn't have time to properly wrap wow. him. And, wow. And do all the things that they should do and anoint him, rub him with the oil and everything. They didn't have embalming. They didn't have Lattimore and Ocean View and McKeever and, 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 and all these places. But, but, but they, had, they had to hurry up and get him down because the Sabbath day was approaching them. And, and in the process of that, they were, they were rushing, trying to get some things done. And, and they weren't able to get everything done like they should have. I know some of you have been rushing and, and trying to get things in place so, 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 so that you can show up to church on Sunday sometime. I know you've been rushing and you've been trying to push things. You say, it just seemed like I just can't get it together. Out of all I do, I'm still late. Out of all I do, I'm still running behind. But I just want to let you know, you might be running late. You might be running behind. But as long as you show up in time to give God some praise. Oh, that's all you need to do. You need to show up and give him some praise. The song just said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us. Y'all catch that later. Y'all get it. But they takes him and they, they put him in, in this tomb. They put him in this tomb. And they were so concerned about him being there. Yeah, yeah. They said, we go put this big stone in front of him. Yes, sir. In other words, they, we're going to hold him down. Right, we heard uh. them talking about him rising. But uh, yeah. we're going to make sure he don't come out of this hole. Yeah. Not only will we put a stone in front of him, yeah. Yeah. but we're going to put some guards <laughs> on, at the stone as well. Yeah. Then, then we realized that as they did all that, they thought they had him. Yeah. Let me help you out with something. See, what you don't realize that sometimes you can't get to where you need to get to because somebody has already put a stone in front of you. Not only did they put a stone in front of you, but they also put some people to push up some stuff. You just trying to go higher in God. But they are pushing, they are pushing up some stuff. We need to make sure that they don't come out of this. But Reverend Huggins, if he can take you off the trash pile, if he can take you off the trash pile and make somebody out of you, you ought to give God some praise. I don't have to understand your praise. You don't have to understand my praise because my praise may be different than why you have a praise. But I just come to tell you I got a praise and I got to get it out. Now, now you need to understand all of us didn't act the same way. All of us didn't do the same thing. But still, still there was, there was a darkness that came over 
everything. And what I want you to understand is that the darkness that came over everything is getting late in the evening. The sun is going down. Darkness had already covered everything anyway, but now they have him in the tomb. Can you just imagine that the dark night and they are getting together and they thinking that their savior that they were looking up to was getting ready to bring them out and make a way for them but now they look around and that savior that they was looking up to he's no longer there now he's not there now well what are we gonna do well how are we gonna get out of this mess Peter had already denied him so now can you imagine that they're thinking in their mind we done followed this man and we done followed him up and down the road we done been on the mountain of transfiguration with him and still now we are stuck here we are in this dark place how many of you in a dark place today you're in a place in your life and it seemed like no matter what you do you keep running into the same thing you keep running into the same problem and soon as you think you're coming out of one thing something else pop up just as soon as you think the day gonna break something else happened but can you just imagine you just imagine he laid in that tomb but you know what you need to understand is that while he was in the tomb he wasn't on vacation but the Bible tells me that he went to the lower parts of the earth and released those that died before he came. Because you need to understand one thing is that the Bible tells us that you cannot get to heaven. Only way you can get there is through and by Jesus Christ. So he had to go down. He had to go way down and get Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and bring them out of the holding place so that they'll be able to descend on high. I come to tell you today, he wasn't on vacation and he's not on vacation now. He's not vacationing right now. I don't care who may be on vacation, but he's not on vacation. Do I have anybody in here know that he's alive? He's alive. He's alive and well. Let me, let me hurry up, let me hurry up, let me hurry up. Let me, let me, let me, let me just, let me do this right here. In, 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 in St. Mark, St. Mark 16, and, and, and the second verse, the third verse, and, and, and it said, and they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? Who gonna do it? Who gonna move it? We ain't nothing but some ladies. The stone is too big. Not only that, but they got guards. How we gonna talk to them? How we gonna get all this stuff out of the way? Our lives is built up with a whole lot of mess. This world we live in, we've been dealing with COVID, we've been dealing with flu, you've been dealing with high blood pressure, you've been dealing with sugar diabetes, you've been dealing with a lot of things and seem like it's trying to overtake you, but how are we gonna get out of this mess? How are we gonna get past this? I can imagine those ladies saying, I want to know, can who who, who going to help us? I, 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 I don't see Peter. I, I don't see James. I don't see John. I, I, where they at? I, I, I want to know where they at. I, 
I look around today. I want to know where the Christians at. Where the people of God at. I, I, I look around. I want to know who's going to help us praise him. Who's going to help us lift up his name. Somebody say, I can't do church two times. But I tell you what, if you was on your sick bed, you would do it more than two times. Uh, but I come to tell you today, while you got activity of your lips, you ought to give God some praise. While you got breath in your body, you ought to give God some praise. While you can move around for yourself, you ought to show up to church sometime. Well, let me hurry up and let me hurry up and get this stone out of the way. But, but, but here it is. They, they are contemplating over what to do with the stone. They're trying to figure out how we're going to do this. They got their spices, but they just don't know that he'd already been anointed. It's already been taken care of. Oh, when the woman took that precious oil and poured it on him, she already got him ready. Somebody need to tell you that God already got you ready. When he gave you your right mind, he got you ready to receive salvation. When he gave you your right mind, he gave you strength in your body to be able to understand that there is a God and he cares about us all. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he loved me in spite of who I was. I'm glad he cared about me in spite of who I was. But let me just help you out with something. In the book of James, the first chapter and the 17th verse, it said every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Now Jesus was that good gift and not only that, he was that perfect gift. And you mean to tell me you got a good gift and you got a perfect gift and it's locked up in a tomb and you're not going to let it out? You're going to tell me that the word said that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And you're going to tell me that son is going to stay trapped in a, in a cell? That son is going to stay trapped in a tomb that's not even his? Well, I can just just imagine in my mind. I can just imagine that, that, that God is getting ready to do something. I, I, I love this song, and some of y'all might say he ain't got no business loving that. But I love this song. Say, don't worry. Just be happy. Anybody here happy today? You ought to be happy just to be able to show up out here. Don't worry. Just be happy because God got it. He got it all under control. How do I know that? The Bible said he's Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. So everything that happened from the beginning to the end, God is in control of it. And when you give your life to him, he's in control of you. Satan is trying to take you out. Satan is trying to wipe you away. But God got it all in control. But let me just help you out here he's in this tomb now can you imagine as they lay down they lay down trying to get some rest tossing and turning all night long getting in their mind we got to get up early early in the morning we got to go out the Sabbath is gone we got to go out and anoint the body of our Savior now we got to go it's darkness out there we got to figure our way out see as long as it's darkness you're always trying to figure your way out that's why the word tells us we were once in darkness but now we are walking in the light and because we are walking in the light we don't have to wonder no more I look out that door out there now it's daylight out there and the Bible tells me that early 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 the first day of the week 
uh, the Sabbath had been ended and now they come and as they come to this place and they find out that the stone has been moved away and as they find out the stone has been moved away I just want to tell you they might have said who moved who moved the stone I want to know who moved it out of the way somebody must have taken our savior and moved him somewhere else but let me give you a flash news break nobody moved him anywhere else nobody stole his body nobody hid it from you but let me just give you breaking news breaking news that is said in the word in the second verse and behold there was a great earthquake and the angel, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven don't you know the angel can't come to earth to take care of no business unless he get permission from the father so that's why I'm telling you today God did it God said the angel he took the earthquake he shook up the ground when he shook up the ground the stone had to move when he shook up the ground the people that's trying to hold you back they got to move when he shake up the ground the backbiters got to get off your back when he shake up the ground the gossipers got to stop gossiping when he shake up the ground when they shake up the ground, you got to give God some praise. But, but as I look at this thing and I say here, well, now God dispatched the angel. The angel came and he rolled back. He rolled back the stone. He didn't roll back the stone to try to impress anybody. But he rolled back the stone because it was already said, if you destroy this temple, you destroy this temple in three days, it will come back. I don't know about you, but I just believe, I just believe he got up. He got up because God, God did it. All of you that are in here now, you ought to say to yourself, I can feel an earthquake taking place in my body. I can feel the shaking of the power of God. I can feel my shoulders getting a little loose. I can feel my hand getting a shaking. Somebody say, why are you doing that? Tell them it's an earthquake in the house. Tell them it's an earthquake in the house. God is getting ready to do something. God is getting ready to shake up this house. God is getting ready to turn something. God is turning some things over. God is moving the stone. God! I can feel it. I can feel it. Somebody say, what do it feel like? It feel like the power, the power of the Holy Ghost. I can feel it. I can feel it all over me. I can feel it. Can you feel it? 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 Let me get him out of here. Let me get him out of here. But 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 he 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 he's not there. He's not there. He's not there. He's not there. But I want to ask you, who woke you up this morning? God did it. I want to know who gave you breath in your body. God did it. I want to know who gave you food to eat. God did it. I just want to know who caused you to be saved today. God did it. You ought to praise him because God did it. You ought to praise him because he's worthy. Listen. Yeah. 
I'm going to jump all the way down to the 10th verse and I'm going to sit down. The 10th verse, then Jesus, then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid. You know what I found out about church people? They'll tell you they saved, but they scared to praise him. I heard, heard pastor the other night, he said, some of them are too dignified, too smart. The uh, only thing I'm going to tell you, they ain't intelligent though. Because they was intelligent, they will know as smart as I am is only because of God. If they was intelligent enough, they'll know I'm only what I am because of God. Because I don't know about you, I just run back this. I remember a man that was a king, but he fell from God. And he lost his sense, lost his kingship, and went out and ran among the woods and stuff with the wild beasts. So, so, so if you're intelligent enough, you might say you got the degrees, you might say you're smart enough, but, but if you're intelligent, you will know it's only because of the grace of God. And when somebody say, how did you get where you are? You say, God did it. And when somebody say, how, how, how in the world did, did, did you imagine, did, how in the world did you, were you able to buy what you buy? Tell them God did it. Oh, it, 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 it's not the good job. There's some people got some good jobs and still don't have nothing. But, but now how, how did it happen? Tell them God did it. God did it. Sister Spain saying, say everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. God did it. I remember years ago, out here at Bethlehem, used to be in the old church. They used to sing a song. Say, God did it all by himself. He hung the moon. He hung the stars. He hung the sun. He did it all by himself. I'm glad to know that God did it. Yeah. He did it all by himself. God did it. God did it. He brought him out of the tomb. Allowed, allowed, he allowed. Let me show y'all. God ain't no crazy person. He ain't no dummy. He took his time. He took his time. He took his time. The garment that had him bound. I was thinking about this thing the other night. I don't know the musician's name but they put chains all on them. Hook them up. Throw them in the water. They loose the chain and they come out. But Jesus was all wrapped up. I didn't read in the word where, where, where angel unwrapped him. So, 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 so I, I, I'm still trying to figure that one out. But the only thing I know that they took him. They took the garment and it said it was rolled Rolled, rolled, and I, as I was thinking about it, my heart aches, he rolled it up. My pain, he rolled it up. My line, he rolled it up. My cheating, he rolled it up. My bad days, he rolled it up. He took his time and he rolled it and rolled it and he fixed it until it was nice and all rolled up. Now the thing I need y'all to understand, as it was rolled, the word don't tell me that it came out of the tomb, but he left it. He left it, if you want to say, in the graveyard. So you don't have to carry your pain. You don't have to carry your hurt. You don't have to carry your backstabbers. You don't have to carry your liars. You ought to take it and say to yourself, when Jesus died on the cross, and when they rolled him up, and when he unrolled it, he rolled he rolled he 
rolled everything up and he left it he left it in the tomb and he came out of the tomb how do I know he came out of the tomb because the word said that when he met them he met them and he told them be not afraid he said but go and tell my brethren go tell your brethren go tell your sisters go tell your neighbors that I'm alive because God did it go tell them go tell them to go into Galilee and there shall they see me I just want to let you know today or oh, we may not see him physically but I can feel I can feel somebody said I can feel God stretching out stretching out stretching out in me I just want to let you know the darkness is gone the night is gone it was a long night it was a long night seemed like wasn't going to ever come out of it but early 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 in the morning early before the break of day he got up he got up with all power in his hand he got up with the victory he got up He got up. 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 How did he do it? When them people that don't believe in Jesus, they say, tell me how he got up. Just tell them I'm not a scientist I'm not a professor but the only thing I know he got up how you know he got up because God did it but tell me a little more how you know you can tell him I know because I can feel him. 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 Shake somebody's hand and say, I can feel it. Now, if you didn't feel nothing from them, shake somebody else's hand. Because I was told, if you got the spirit in you, and when my spirit connect with your spirit, something gonna happen. Look at somebody. Say God did it. Now when you tell them that, you ought to feel a little something. Let me ask this, can your hand move? You got to shake up some stuff in your life. You got to shake up some stuff. You've been holding it too tight. I done told you he done rolled it up. He done left it in the tomb. You don't have to take it no more. You don't have to carry it with you. Y'all stand, y'all stand, I'm through. When he rolled up the garment, 
that they buried him with. He rolled up the things that you needed. So that you could live. So you can live. So you can live. I want you to understand that. Listen, let me, let me say something to you. We're getting older. And there's some things that come with age that's not going to change. You know, so, but living is not complaining about your age. Living is praising God for your age. When I was young, I didn't understand. I used to tell my daddy, daddy, it don't make no sense for you to be that, move like that. But he said, keep living. Keep living. So now I learned. You slow down. Can't work as long. Can't run as fast. You need some help. Them bones don't slide in place like they used to but don't complain I'm breathing I got enough in me say God I thank you God I thank you I praise you because I know you did it God you woke me up I got something to tell you thank you for. Took me a long time to understand. I don't I don't I don't need to measure material things with others to validate me being successful. Because you know why I couldn't have realized what you don't see me with. I got it anyway. Somebody say, how you got it? Everything belong to God. And because I'm his child, I have access to it. My daddy had a truck. It was his truck. But I couldn't drive it. But it was there. And then when I asked, I could drive it. What I'm saying to you, everything you need, God has. But our biggest problem is we are trying to measure ourselves to the success of man. When the Bible says learn to be content, whatever state you're in, you got to add another part of a scripture to that. Say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, You're not chasing things, but you're chasing him. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think about the one thing. The one thing that bothers you the most on this day. All we can do is ask God. He said, we have not because we ask not. So I'm just going to ask him to meet our needs. And let me say this to you with your eyes closed. 
I say often we miss testimonies because when we ask God, somebody else needs to know when God did it. So I'm going to say to you that when I pray today, I don't care what church you are at, but when God do it for you, when God do it for you, I need you to give a testimony somewhere or another of what God did. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you know all things. And you know, God, that we love you. And we tell you thank you. God, we tell you thank you for your son coming, living, dying, getting out of the grave. Taking all of our pain. We thank you. But God, we stand here in Bethlehem today knowing that there are needs that still need to be met in our lives. So God, we ask you now, God, that if you will, God, just touch each individual. Let them know, God, that you're there for them. All they got to do is call on the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you right now. Those that are sick and was unable to get here, those, God, that just, God, just thought they did not have the time to show up here today. But, God, we pray for them, God, that they will rise up and go out and show the world that you are our risen Savior. And we give you praise for that. So now, God, I pray that you will bless every church represented here. Let the Spirit of God dwell in it richly. And as the Spirit of God dwell in it richly, God, we pray that you will bless us. Keep us. Keep our minds. Keep our hearts. Keep us pure. Keep us serving you in a day like today. And we just going to tell you, thank you, God, for everything that the world is throwing at us. You said you'll put no more on us than what we'll be able to bear. So, God, we're going to get through this. But we'll get through it with you. And we praise you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise if you don't mind. Tell him thank you if you don't mind. Let's give the bishop a hand of praise. Come on. I got one question. Who did it? Who did it? Bless his holy name. What a word. What a word on this morning. God bless you, bishop. Preaching from the depths of his soul. Amen. But we trust that everyone in the building are saved. Amen. And Amen. If you're not saved, raise your hand. Amen. No hands up. Everybody say, we trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, let us not, once again, once again, want to thank all our preachers and uh, visitors for coming to share with us on this morning. Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, Pastor Judge, do you have anything you want to say? Sir? All right. Amen. All right. Now, to Bethlehem, let us not forget, we'll be back here at 10 o'clock. Amen. Yeah, those online, I know you're watching. You didn't come at 6. I hope to see you at 10. Amen. 
Yeah, and then we be here at 11. Amen. All right. Amen. Glory to his name. We also have a repast. I uh, said on Friday night, a repast, and Elder Brown kind of put me in check. And she said, you said repast? You mean some grits and egg? I, I thought about it. I didn't say refreshment. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so we do thank the Lord. Thank God for all of you all. Amen. Praise his holy name. What a word. What a word. Amen. Come on, give God some more praise. Amen. Do we have any, any other announcements, anything at this particular time? Amen. Any announcements from our visitors, anyone? Certainly we thank God for you. Amen. All right. And there is nothing else. Uh, after we finish the service, we're going to invite you all. Please, ma'am, please, sir, meet us over in the fellowship hall. Amen. I think we got some pretty good cooks over there. I'm bragging for y'all get over there. I pray all is well. Amen. But we do thank God uh, for you all. Amen. If there's nothing else, we're going to ask that Bishop Spain to come back and give us a, a closing remarks. Amen. It's all way. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Amen. I'm asking you to stand. Well. St. John, y'all know as well, Sunday school at 10, morning worship at 11, and uh, since I went over my 20, I might shorten. <laughs> we'll see what the Lord say. Y'all notice I said I might shorten, but I don't know what the Lord going to say. Amen. We thank God for all of you. It's good to see all of you. Let's pray that God will keep us. And, and, and bless us. We are living in a serious time for Christians. And if you drug your feet before, you better pick them up now. Because uh, people will challenge your relationship with God. One time they didn't bother with that, but they don't mind challenging you now. And, and if you, if you I, I, I'll say... You, you got to be like, how the old song say, your anchor. Got to be grip. It's got to hold you. Right there, if you don't, you'll be drifting away. We thank God for every church represented here. As, as uh, Dr. Bridges said, we ask you to pray for us, that God will bless us and keep us. Ask you to bow your head. We're going to bless the food and uh Give the benediction. Father, we thank you now for this blessed day that you have made. And God, we pray for everyone that is here. God, we pray that you will bless the food that will be nourished for our bodies. The hand that prepared it, God, we ask you to sanctify it now and let it give us strength. And God, above all, let us take this day as a day of praise. We just tell you, thank you right now. And we praise you for who you are. May the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide with all of us henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let us all say amen. 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 God bless you, man. Amen. Bless you, sir. Thank you, man. Right. Y'all can go to the fellowship hall. All right. All right. Thank you, man. Happy Easter, happy Easter to everyone. Uh, uh, you know, ha happy Resurrection Day. Never would have made